good morning and welcome to our service at Northwest Bear United Church. It is Sunday, August the 29th, the end of a very long, hot week of summer, so I hope you've been able to enjoy it. Let's start, as we always do, by sharing uh, good news. I know lots of people in our church have been uh, celebrating uh, birthdays and anniversaries the last month. Just a note for clarity, um, I only pass along birthday or anniversary wishes if someone lets me know directly. Because um, I know that not everybody necessarily wants uh, their birthday shared. So please let me know if you would like me to share your birthday or anniversary. I'd love to pass it along. So I did hear of two birthdays this week. First of all, a very happy birthday to Nancy Walsh, who celebrated last week. And uh, happy birthday to Ed Orham. Uh, for those of you who uh, go to Northwest, I'm sure you remember Ed and Eleanor, who were here for many, many years and finally moved uh, to London to be closer to family. Ed turned 90 this week, so happy birthday to Ed. Just uh, one announcement today, and that's regarding the uh, reopening of our church, which I know is an announcement that uh, many people have been waiting for. Uh, we did uh, decide that we are going to open for in-person worship services on Sunday morning. Our first Sunday is going to be Sunday, September the 19th. And we're going to have in place really exactly the same protocols as we had last time we opened for a couple of months. So maximum 45 people. We're going to invite you to sign up ahead of time, and we'll let you know how to do that. Um, we invite people to wear masks and, and distance and so forth. Um, Sunday school will remain online for now, and uh, there won't be refreshment time, but certainly we'll be building up to that in the coming weeks. So it's really exciting. Can't wait to get back together again. So again, mark it on your calendar. September 19th is our first Sunday back in person. And then we will, of course, live stream for those who are, are uh, still at home or away, and, and so you're still able to be part of, of our Sunday morning service. So let's begin now with our call to worship. Come, gather into worship. Bring the stories of your faith. Bring your memories of joy. Bring your tears of love. Bring all your yesterdays and all the possibilities of your tomorrows and offer them to God. Let us listen, pray, and praise together. Amen. Our opening hymn is God of the Bible.
Please join me now in our opening prayer and let us pray. Let us take this silent moment just to be still, to breathe deeply and to feel this moment. If your eyes are open, what do you see around you? What is familiar and comforting, peaceful? If your eyes are closed, what sounds do you hear? When we can be still in a moment and open our senses, we can know that the busyness of life may go on around us, but we've stepped away from it for a moment. And so for a few minutes, let us try to let go of the worries that fill our mind, release some of the tension that fills our bodies, share through prayer some of the concerns that fill our hearts, and may we be fully present to the music and the message of worship, and may it bring us closer into communion with the God who is love and peace. Amen. Special music today is a song I know lots of people, including myself, love. It is For the Beauty of the Earth. Enjoy.
for the, uh, for the offering or the virtual offering today, I'd, I'd like to just share with you a little reflection that I recently read. It's written by one of my favorite uh, writers, and I quote him off, Richard Wagamese, the, uh, the Ojibwe writer. And uh, before I, I share, let me just say one of the reasons that, that I give to the church is a way of trying to stay in a place of gratitude. And I know one thing that I've really been grateful for, especially through this pandemic, has been people, um, family, friends, people in this congregation, who, uh, who, although we've been separated, still find a way to, to stay connected. And you realize through this how important people truly are. So I'd like to just share this little reflection, again, by Richard Wagamese. We approach our life on different trajectories, each of us spinning in our own separate, shining orbits. What gives this life its resonance is when those trajectories cross and we become engaged with each other for as long or as fleetingly as we do. There's a shared energy there, and it can feel as though the whole universe is in the process of coming together. I live for those moments. No one is truly ever just passing through. Every encounter has within it the power of enchantment, if we're willing to look for it. How true that is. Nobody is ever just passing through, but everyone has a reason for being in our lives, and we are grateful for them. And I am grateful as well for your continued support of our church. For the scripture lesson today, I'm going to be sharing the reading from Mark 10, verses 13 to 16. Jesus blesses the children. As Jesus journeyed on, people were bringing little children to him in order that he might be with them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them and tried to keep them away from Jesus. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said to those gathered, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, and he blessed them. Amen. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our light. Amen. Someone recently asked me a very difficult question. They asked me what my favorite story is in the Bible. That's a tough question. Maybe it's not a tough question for you. Maybe you have a favorite that immediately comes to mind. But to be honest, I don't know if I really have a favorite because so many stories affect me in so many different ways. Different stories I love because they teach, some I love because they inspire me, some I love because they challenge me, some kind of make me laugh like Balaam's donkey turning his head and asking Balaam to stop hitting him, and, and some stories don't resonate with me as much. That's the nature of the Bible. But there is one story in the Bible that I've always liked. And I've liked it ever since I was a kid, and maybe that's partly because it is about kids. It's the one I just read. There's something I love about this idea of Jesus hurrying along the road, trying to get somewhere. We don't know where. But suddenly, he finds himself amongst a group of children. Now remember, children in Jesus' day were a distraction. They were to be seen and not heard, or preferably not even seen. And that's exactly how the disciples treat them as a distraction. They try to keep them away from Jesus. But instead, Jesus says, hang on. This is an important moment. And he gathers the kids to him, and then he blesses them, and then he teaches those around them that children have a very special place in the heart of the kingdom of God. There's a lot of reasons that I love that story. Firstly, it humanizes Jesus. It also reminds us of the inclusiveness of the gospel message or Jesus' message. And for those like me who love kids, I love the idea that Jesus is saying that children are just as important. They have just as important place in the world. Maybe it invites us in some ways to kind of get in touch with the child within each of us. Because often the greatest truths are revealed in, in the simplest childlike things. But what I like the most about it is the fact it's a passing moment. It could have been ignored or avoided, or passed over for more important things. But for Jesus, 
It was a moment of meaning. It was a moment to be embraced, an opportunity to share something and to teach and to learn something. Now, as I reflect on that idea, it reminds me that life really is a moment-by-moment -moment endeavor, isn't it? We make plans, we have lofty goals, we think ahead, we have agendas. But truly, the value of life is found in the moment. How we react to the unexpected, how we take advantage of a sudden opportunity, and how life can change very quickly. Life is lived in the moment. Buddha once said this, do not dwell on the past, do not dream of the future, Concentrate the mind on the present moment. I know that's easy to say, and I know it's equally hard to do. But it's a reminder that life is a moment-by-moment -moment journey. I had an interesting moment this uh, summer. Not my finest moment, by any means. Some of you may have heard this story, but I was driving one day along Ferndale Drive. I was heading north from the south end. Uh, I was between... Um, Tiffin and Dunlop, for those who are no Barry and can locate where I was. My mind was filled with, I was on my way to the church, and my mind was filled with things that I had to get done, the, the agenda that I had for that day. Um, I had the radio on, the window was down to get some fresh air. And suddenly I felt something almost wet hit me in the ear. I figured it was a leaf or something blowing in from the, from, from the side of the car. Uh, kept driving. And then suddenly I felt something on my leg. And I looked down and there was the biggest bumblebee I've ever seen crawling on my leg, and I was wearing shorts. Now, if you know me, you know I have a mild, maybe not so mild, phobia of anything that flies and stings. Bees, wasps, hornets. I'm not even a big fan of dragonflies. Well, scientists tell us that when you are suddenly in a place of fear or terror, which I was in that moment, a very primal part of your brain takes over and you act by reflex. And I did. I, first of all, I jerked the wheel of the car. Thank goodness there was nobody in the lane beside me. And then I reached down and in, in, the, in the pocket of my door there were some napkins left over from a, an old visit to McDonald's. Grabbed the napkins, grabbed the bumblebee, threw the napkins and the bumblebee straight out of the window. Guy behind me starts beeping his horn because I'm sure he's thinking this guy is probably drunk and a litter bug. I'm surprised I didn't get a, a visit from the police later that afternoon. But that's the power of a moment. It bursts through our plans, it skews our agenda, it disrupts our thoughts, and it seeks a reaction. I'm sure you can think of how a moment has done that for you, hopefully a more positive one than I came up with. In a book called The Power of Moments, researchers tell us that moments are more important than we think. They refer to moments as peaks, as, the, like, as in the peaks of a mountain. If you look across a landscape and there's a mountain range in the background, you won't see the valleys, the plateaus, even though there's lots going on there. What you will see are the peaks of the mountain. And so it's true with us. If you look over the landscape of your life or look back on the landscape of your life, what you will see and remember, chances are, are the moments that brought some clarity to you. The unexpected happenstances that have stayed with you. For example, I can't tell you anything that else that happened that day when the bee came to pay me a visit, but I will be telling that story over and over again until people roll their eyes and say, oh, here we go again. That moment was a peak moment for me. The book says that there are four types of peak moments that we can have, and this is interesting, so I want to put them up on the screen so you can, you can hopefully remember them. Firstly, there are moments of elevation or moments that elevate us. These are moments in life that lift us above the everyday and inspire in us emotions like joy or delight or wonder or a sense of enjoyment. For example, I remember when I was 10 years old, and it was my birthday, and uh, my parents said that we had to go to Woco, which for those of a younger generation was the forerunner of Walmart. We had to go clothes shopping. And I thought, that's the last thing I want to do on my birthday. So we all pile in the car and off we go. And uh, just before we get to Woco, my dad pulls into a parking lot, and it was actually the parking lot of the, bowl, the Bowlerama. So he, we were never going to Woco, we were always going to go bowling. But that was a moment of elevation, and, and all these years, 43 years later, I still remember how that moment felt. Second type of moment is what they refer to as insight. 
These are moments that rewire our understanding of ourselves. Sometimes we call these aha moments. You know, maybe one day you're sitting in church and the minister's droning on and on, as sometimes we can do. But all of a sudden, the minister says something that just like an arrow goes straight through to your heart, and you feel like the minister, like he or she, is talking directly to you. That would be an aha moment. I was in a meeting on Zoom the other day, and honestly, kind of half paying attention. And then someone said a quote, and for whatever reason that day, I just needed to hear it. He said, are you really having a bad day? Or did you just have a bad moment in the day that you were milking? And I don't know why, but that was like an aha moment for me. It's true though, isn't it? We always talk about having a bad day, but what we're really having usually is just a bad moment or two in an otherwise fine day. Those are insight moments. Thirdly, are pride moments. There are moments that capture us. These are the moments that capture us at our best. If you look back over the landscape of your life, chances are you remember the moment you scored a winning goal or did a perfect dive that you were praised for, uh, the day you got a promotion at work or won a speech contest or a spelling bee. Again, they are the peaks that stand out. And finally, there are connection moments. These are the moments that deepen our ties with others, that let us know that we're not alone, such as Jesus stopping to talk to the children, if you have a significant other in your life, I can almost guarantee that you don't remember what he or she said yesterday, but I can guarantee you remember the first moment you saw them because it was a connection. It was a peak moment. Those are the peaks in life. Elevation, insight, pride, and connection. These are the peaks, the moments we most remember, and they tend to define our experience of life. And one day when someone shares a eulogy about your life, they're not going to share all the mundane stuff that happened in the valley. They're going to share some of those peaks that contain the essence of life. But here's the other thing about moments. Not only do they tend to define the landscape of our life, but often the best moments are not planned for, orchestrated, or created. They just happen. They happen on the road of life on the journey between here and there. They are the unscripted moments, but often they open up something in us, and that's why we never forget them. Let me give you an example. We all know who Oprah Winfrey is. She's uh, interviewed literally thousands of people on her show and in different, different places. She could never possibly remember every interview she's had. But she was asked recently to share her most memorable conversation, and this, this is the story that she told. I'm going to share it in her words. An 11-year-old girl named Kate and her older brother, Zach, joined me on the show a few months ago after they lost their mom, a woman named Kathleen. They told me that prior to her death, their parents had decided to spend Kathleen's last months taking trips together as a family. So I asked Kate, what was her favorite moment from the last few months of her mom's life? Her answer for me was a big aha. One day when I came back from swimming, Kate told me, my mom was in bed. She said, Kate, would you get me a bowl of cereal? My mom loved eating Cheerios. So I said, sure. So I got her a bowl of Cheerios. Then, one week before she died, I was in my parents' room and I said, Mom, would you wake me up if you go downstairs to get a bowl of cereal? She said she would. So that night at 2 a.m., my mom woke me to say she was getting a bowl of cereal, and she asked me to join her. So at 2 a.m. in the morning, we had a bowl of Cheerios together. And she said that was her favorite moment. Think about that. All the places they went, all the money they spent, all the adventures they had, much of which she will never remember. But she'll never forget eating a bowl of Cheerios with her mom at 2 a.m. It's the value of connection. John Lennon once said that life is what happens when we're making plans. And isn't it true? The peaks in the landscape of our lives are often not the big adventurous trips or the, the jaw-dropping beautiful gifts 
Rather, they are the ordinary moments that are filled with extraordinary love or wonder or hope. Perhaps that's why when Jesus was once asked to describe the kingdom of God, he used the image of a mustard seed. Do you know how small a mustard seed is? It is almost microscopic. It was as if Jesus was saying, look for God among the ordinary, the small, the seemingly insignificant, because you may just find exactly what you're looking for. So the question is, can we generate these kind of moments in our life? These wonderful peaks that we will never forget? The short answer is, I'm not sure that we can. They tend to just happen, often when we least expect it. But if there's one thing we can learn from the story of Jesus and the children, it's that there is a way to ensure that we don't have these moments. And that is to rush through life unaware of what is going on around us. Keep walking, said the disciples to Jesus. No, said Jesus, this moment is too important. It's easy to do, isn't it? To keep walking. What if that mom in the story had thought to herself, it's the middle of the night, I'm not going to disturb my daughter and make her wake up to get a bowl of Cheerios. She would have, without knowing it, denied her daughter a peak moment, something that would forever define the love that they shared. I think that's why almost every spiritual teacher in history have taught us to strive to live open to the moment. One of those modern-day spiritual teachers is Eckhart Tolle. This is how he said it. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you to read. Your entire life only happens in this moment. The present moment is life itself. Yet, people live as if the opposite were true and treat the present moment as a stepping stone to the next moment, a means to an end. Those are wise words. Sometimes we think of moments simply as stepping stones to some future destination when sometimes the destination is the moment itself. If Jesus had arrived at his planned destination on time, he would have missed the real destination along the way, which was that moment with the children. We have to seize, be open to, the possibility of the moment. I don't know if there's any country music fans out there, but there's an old country and western song called Roses for Mama. I, to be honest, I don't actually know the song, but I recently read the story in the song. It goes like this. It's Mother's Day, and a man goes into a florist to buy roses for his mom. He knows he should visit her, but he's a busy guy with other places to go, so he decides to send her flowers instead. As he's looking around the store, he hears the door open. And a little boy comes in and says to the shopkeeper that he wants to buy roses for his mother for Mother's Day. Shopkeeper quotes the little boy a price. Boy opens his wallet. He doesn't have enough money. The man watches what's going on and sees the disappointment on the boy's face, so he goes over to him and asks how much he's short he then reaches into his pocket and gives him the rest of the money to buy the flowers. The boy is overjoyed with gratitude and leaves the store with a big smile on his face. The man then goes ahead and places his order for his roses for his mother. He then leaves the store, and as he's driving home, he passes the cemetery. And there he sees that same little boy knelt over a tombstone, placing his flowers at a grave. Man turns around, goes back to the florist, and says, Have you placed the order? The florist says, No. He says, Cancel it. I want to deliver these roses by hand. That's what moments do. In many ways, they are the language for life, encapsulating what life is about in sometimes the simplest of things. You know, that man could have gone to church on Mother's Day and listened to a, a long sermon about mothers or how to be in relationship, and it may have gone in on one ear and out the other. But I needed that moment of seeing that boy to truly open his heart, to give him that aha, to shift his perspective, and to discover a new way. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. What is your moment? Here's mine. The year was 1989. I returned home for a weekend from my second year of study at Carleton University, 
I was taking a degree in political science. I came home to visit my parents in uh, Toronto. They invited me to come to church with them, a church that I hadn't gone to in a very long time. My time at university had been a time of learning about myself and learning new ideas and stimulating my brain, but it had made me suspicious of all things spiritual. Church was no longer part of my life, and I figured it would always be part of my past. It would never be part of my future. I didn't feel compelled to go to church with them. I didn't necessarily want to, but I did, for old time's sake. I don't really remember what the service was about. I don't remember what the sermon was about. I don't remember who was there. But it was while we were singing the first hymn, which was Holy, Holy, Holy. I know a lot of people know that hymn. The entire church was swelled with music, with the organ and and voices singing. The sun was shining through the stained glass window, bathing the front of the church in light. And suddenly I felt this feeling of warmth go all the way through me like a ray of sunlight breaking through the clouds. My clouds were clouds of skepticism and doubt and fear. And suddenly in that moment, that lasted for no more than 20 seconds, I knew that God was there. I could feel it in every bone in my body and every fiber of my being. It's a moment I can only describe as peaceful and balanced and sacred. And as quickly as it came, it was gone. It's because of that moment that I'm here today. It shifted something in me. It opened something up in me. It started me on a journey I could never have imagined. I've had moments since, but none like that. And sometimes I long to feel that moment again. But the fact that I felt it at all was all I needed to know that truly, Truly, we are not alone. It's on that moment that I have built and continue to build the faith that has sustained and nurtured me through my life. Maybe that's the kind of thing that Jesus was getting at. God speaks to us often in the in-between times, in the unexpected moments between destinations. Watching a shooting star on a warm summer night in the sunlight streaming through the stained glass windows of the church, among a group of children on a roadside between here and there, in the vision of someone kneeling at a cemetery or over a bowl of Cheerios at 2 a.m. In those moments, the mustard seed is planted and we know that we are not alone. What is your moment? Amen. always we're going to end with a prayer and then we're going to have the lord's prayer and i invite you to uh, to uh, sing along let us pray god who is the breath and meaning in every moment hear our prayers today we thank you for the stories of scripture that invite us to think about our lives our relationships the unique journey that each of us are on For like Jesus, we are all moving somewhere, going somewhere, looking down the road to what is ahead. And yet you invite us to change our focus. Instead of looking ahead or looking back, we're invited to look around. For often the real destination is within our grasp, in the connections we make with others, in the beauty we see in the simple kindnesses we give and receive. May we seek you in the mustard seed moments as well as the mighty moments and find you among the simplest of blessings, a cooling breeze, a smile or a hug, an unexpected visit or the beauty of a late summer's day. And may we know in those moments when we doubt that you are always present to us And may our restless spirits find their rest in you. We come to this prayer time with our own concerns and worries and our hopes and our needs. And so now in this moment, we offer those prayers to you. As we share the need, we feel lighter, knowing that our prayers rest with you.
God, hear our prayers. Moments await as we leave this worship time. Exciting moments. As we work and play and wander through another week, may we look around and find on the roadside of our journey ample blessings to inspire our faith and to settle our spirits. And hear us now as we sing together the words of the Lord's Prayer. everybody for joining us today. It was great to have you as always and uh, we hope you'll be back again next week. I'd like to end with the words of uh, benediction which uh, you'll see on your screen as well. Let us go forth listening with our ears, hearing with our hearts, speaking the truth in love, reaching out our hands to serve. May God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God's countenance be lifted upon us and give us peace now and forever. Amen.